So a major limitation of the shear box test is that um, it assumes, or it has to assume, that the uh, normal stress that we apply to the lid of the box is, in fact, the normal effective stress existing in the sample. Now, that, um, for that assumption to be true, the pore water that um, is generated during the test is uh, quickly dissipated, or it's dissipated relatively quickly compared to the rest of the test. <coughs> so that, what that means is that for um, high permeable materials like sands, we can have a really rapid shear box test um, and be comfortable in the knowledge that the pore water pressure is dissipated during the test. Uh, for clay um, or low permeable materials, um, what we have to do in a shear box test is shear the, uh, the sample really slowly to make sure that the pore water pressure is given a chance to dissipate. And when, even then, we're never really quite sure whether the pore water pressure is actually dissipated. So we can never re really be quite sure that we're talking about the effective stress, um, the, the normal effective stress, rather than just the, the normal stress. So um, to overcome some of those limitations, uh, the, the concept of a triaxial test is has been developed. Um, and this is a, a cartoon of a triaxial test. So the way it works is that we have a cylinder of soil. So this is in two dimensions, a profile through um, the triaxial. And we have a cylinder of soil uh, sitting inside a, a non-permeable membrane, so a material like rubber. So that's got a sleeve of, of, of rubber around it. Um, and on top of the, the soil, we have a, a and that, that soil is supported on a, um, on, on a base. And on top of that soil, we can apply an axial load. So we can apply a, a stress to the top. And that's usually the, the net maximum principal stress during the test. Now, the, um, the minor uh, stresses are controlled using this uh, uh, water pressure cell. So around the outside of this, the soil sample, we have um, a, a cell of, uh, of water, um, and we can control the pressure within that cell. And that gives us our sigma 3 and sigma 2 stresses. So what usually happens in a triaxial test is we'll keep sigma 3 and sigma 2, uh, or the, the water pressure constant, and increase the, uh, um, the axial stress until we get failure. Now, during the test, what we can do is monitor the, um, the pore water pressure. So we'll have a, a connecting tube that, uh, that connects the, 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 the pore water and the, in the, the material to a uh, transducer. So the key feature about a triaxial test is that we can monitor the pore water pressure during the test. Um, and by taking uh, that pore water pressure away from sigma 1 and sigma 3, we can understand what the effective stress is within the material. So sigma 1 uh, effective stress is equal to sigma 1 minus the pore water pressure, and sigma 3 effective stress is equal to sigma 3 minus the pore water pressure. So we take the pore water pressure away from both of the normal stresses. Another thing that we can measure in the triaxial test is uh, the vertical displacement of the, the sample. And if we um, take the vertical displacement and divide it by the initial um, soil uh, height, uh, what, we, what we derive is what's called the axial strain. So change in H over H0 equals axial strain. We also um, monitor the change in volume of the, the water within the cell. So if the sample um, increased in volume, it would push some of this, this water out of the cell, and um, we'd, we'd measure it um, out here. Um, and if we take the change in volume and we divide it by the initial volume, what we get is the volumetric strain. So these are the things that we monitor in a triaxial test. But how do we interpret them? So what happens in a, a drained triaxial test is that we usually start the uh, sigma 1 and sigma 3 at around the same, um, same value, the same pressure. So we'd, we'd start the test off at the same point on the, the y-axis, uh, on the x-axis. 
And what we do is we'll increase, uh, so this is sigma 3, and sigma 1 will start at the same point. Um, uh, in a triaxial test, you'd, in, you'd keep sigma 3 um, constant and increase sigma 1 uh, up the x-axis until you got to the point of failure. So at the point of failure, you'd record the axial stress. That's sigma 1. Um, effective stress, I should say, for both of those. And what you could do is then draw the, well, the top half of a Mohr circle, join them together through a Mohr circle. And from that, you'd be able to get the, the maximum shear stress uh, during the test. But to, uh, if you recognize the axis, we can draw a more cool, um, Coulomb failure envelope on this axis. Um, but to do that, we need to do more than one test. We need to do several tests. Um, so what we do is then increase the, the conditions at which we'd start the, the, the second test. So we start sigma 3 at a, at a larger value. Um, let use a different color. So let's say we'd start the next test here. Um, with sigma 3 um, and increase sigma 1 again until we got to the point of failure. And let's say that was here, sigma 1. And again, we can connect those up through the top half of a Mohr's circle. And finally, we'll do it again for another, um, uh, another, another test. So we might start it here and the material might fail here. So, so once we've got our three uh, test results here, what we can do is join the, uh, uh, the curves together with a line that touches all three curves. And that would be our more cool on failure envelope. So if we took the, uh, the tan of the gradient of that line, we would find phi and the intercept would be cohesion. So we can use the triaxial test, like the shear box test, to derive shear strength parameters of angle of friction and cohesion. It, this also helps demonstrate what would happen if you increased your pore water pressure, or the effects of changing pore water pressure, in that if you increased your pore water pressure, both the sigma 1 and sigma 3 would uh, change by the same amount, or, or decrease by the, the same amount. Um, and the whole circle would shift to the left for increasing pore water pressure until the point where you are... So let's say we had stress conditions in the soil um, that created a more circle um, over here. And it was... So our maximum shear stress would be known. But what about if we increase pore water pressure? Well, the whole circle would shift um, down uh, until it, pa it, it passed the, the failure envelope and at which point the material would fail. And that's why the pore water pressure is really under, uh, important to understand, and as well as the, the difference between these two uh, principal stresses. So there's a number of different tests that we can do in a, a triaxial test. Uh, the first one I mentioned was a, a drained uh, triaxial test, and that means that we uh, let the water flow out of the... Um, the, the, the material during the test. We can also do an undrained test, uh, in which case the pore water pressures um, uh, are the... the uh, we can also do a drain test. Uh, we can also do an undrained test, and that's when uh, we stop the water flowing out of the soil and let the pore water pressures um, build up. Um, and that's really useful for telling, uh, telling us things about the short-term uh, behavior of the soil. Uh, for instance, when we're, um, when we're loading the material. Um, and what uh, the results of an undrained test would look like um, would be something like this, where no matter where you started your test or what stress range you did it under, you would only ever reach the, the same maximum shear stress. So the consequences of doing an undrained triaxial test um, would be this. So maybe multiple more circles of stress, but all reaching the same maximum uh, shear stress. 
Um, and that's called the undrained shear strength of the material. And there are also um, uh, variants on this uh, between consolidated and unconsolidated. And that means whether we allow the, the, the material to consolidate before the test um, when we're, we're, we're ramping up the load. And I've put a, a matrix of these different tests on, um, on my website. 